Got the key. So let's jack this thing up and check it out. All right, they're definitely getting low, but we got time. They're just paranoid and scared at BMW. I don't know if you can see the inside one, but I can see it. And it's still, it's getting there. The bottom of it is a lot lower than the, front, than the top, but we got some life left. Um, Sure, the other side might be worse, but we won't bother. We'll just order up the pads and uh, do it when they come in. I'm gonna have to do some research on these. They look, they look interesting. Never done one of these before. All right. Well, let's put the wheel back on. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Probably mess with this knob on the interior and see if we can get that working. Alright guys, today we're going to do front brakes on the BMW, it's a 5 Series E60, E61 I believe is also the same. Um, I already did the driver's side, so we're going to do the passenger side, I'll show you everything you need and how to do it. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver, you're going to need a ratchet of your choice and a 7mm hex head. Uh, hex socket you could probably just use an allen key or hex socket with a ratchet whatever you choose um you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket for the lug nut as well as your locking lug nut key um you're gonna need a c clamp and you're gonna need some brake grease and i think that about covers it so Let's get to it. The reason for that is it gets corroded to the hub right here. The aluminum and the steel start to corrode to each other. That's why it gets stuck like that. All right, so as you can see, brake pads have a little bit of life left, but the sensor, um, oh, where is the sensor on this side? I guess, uh, it only has a brake pad sensor on the driver's side. So for that, it's pretty simple. It just goes right in here. You just pull it out. I actually waited until I pulled the caliper off. 
So here we have it fully assembled. This is this clip has to be removed, and then there are two rubber boots. One here, it's supposed to have a cap on it. This one's missing. One on top and one on the bottom right there. Top, bottom, both of these are missing uh, their covers, which is not good at all, but it is what it is. So those are the seven millimeters. This out here, you just use the flathead for. Show you that. This you just need to pry in, just like that. Just pry the little nub out of here. All right, now the seven millimeters. You want to loosen them. Once you have those two bolts unthreaded, you have to compress the piston a little bit to clear the bra uh, caliper bracket. At first I was kind of confused how to remove the caliper from the caliper bracket, but you have to actually start to compress the piston to clearance past the bracket. So we're going to do that now. One thing to note is you do have to fully remove those pins or else the uh, caliper will not compress enough. So, we were getting there. It looks like this inside one was even worse. That one was real low. Um, another thing to note is the top is the shorter of the two pins. Short one goes on top, long one goes on the bottom. All right, so as you can see, this pad locks into place. This pad just sits freely. Um, I don't suggest letting your caliper uh, hang from the line, but I've done it enough times to know that if the line is gonna be damaged by hanging the caliper, then the line's already damaged. But I do not suggest it at the same time. Um, I actually want to leave that pad in to continue to fully compress this piston. So we're going to do that now. This is fully compressed. It will stick out a little bit, but that's fully compressed. So, grab the new pads. One has two pins, one has three. Inside is three.
This is the outside. Here's the inside. You want to put just a tad bit of grease on all three pins and then grease up the ears of the pads. So, where did the grease go? Here we go. Something like that. This is probably a little bit much on this side. Try to take some of it off. But something like that. And then you're going to pop it in. Just like so. It's much easier with two hands. I managed to do it with one though. And then you're gonna take your other pad. Same thing. This one is a little bit harder to do. Now, remember the old pad did not have these pins, but this one does. This is just the brand I bought, I guess. Um, but they do work. I thought maybe they sent me the wrong pads at first, but these are the correct pads. This one is much harder to get in though. So I'm gonna need two hands. As you can see, if you just push evenly on both sides, pops right into place. They hold the pad in place. And now, you can just simply take your caliper. Everything goes right into place. Pop it right on. You take your two studs. You want to grease both of these up very well. I'm going to grease mine a little extra because they don't have the boots. So I want to keep any dirt out of there. Um, if you see any sort of rust or build up or anything on these, you definitely want to clean them off. There's a little bit of old dried up grease here. Not too concerned about. But these are very important. If these C's or are sticking, your brakes will not work how they should. So do not slack on maintaining your pins. All right, now put these back where they were. You might have to position the caliper a little bit, hold it in place. You wanna get these started, make sure they're threading in uh, correctly, straight. Get them started, do not tighten them fully. And then you wanna put this, uh, this spring bracket back in place. I'll show how to do that. And then after you have that in place, then you wanna fully tighten these up.
I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to do this, but you want these ears to go in between this slot here. So, like that. And then it's definitely going to be difficult with one hand, but both ears in between those gaps, top and bottom, and then this has a little slot to go in here. So hopefully you'll be able to wash. I don't know why this side is being much more difficult than the previous side. <clears throat> um, I'm going to try to tighten those bolts up more and see if that helps at all. So the trick was to loosen the caliper bolts up a little bit more. And basically what you have to do is just barely get the top and bottom ear started. And then do the same thing you did to get it off is to pry the caliper towards the rotor and push this push the this is like a spring basically push the spring and then guide it back into the groove and it might not seem like it's in there because there's not it's not very deep but you know if you can't pull it out that means it's in there and then obviously you want to put your wheel back on and torque your lug nuts i'm not exactly sure what the torque spec is but i usually do around 100 foot pounds for most passenger vehicles trucks are usually 120 120 to 150 so i'm not gonna bother showing twerking the wheels but there you go um and remember to pump your brakes before you go to put your vehicle in drive because you won't have brakes at first after compressing the caliper so hope you guys learned something any questions or uh, comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching.